It's the first move by Mr Martin Spencer, who was put in at Boothbury Road by a finance company after the club chairman, Mr Christopher Needler, said he wouldn't put any more of his own money into the club. The receiver, Mr Spencer, had said yesterday that he wanted to sell the Hull City Club as a going concern, and his decision to transfer list all the players has caused some confusion today. But Mr Spencer wasn't available for comment today. The club may be £700,000 in debt and losing £9,000 a week, but the players in training for tomorrow's match against Mansfield put on a brave face. They'll be hoping there'll be some scouts from other clubs in the crowd. One of two talking points this morning was the mass transfer listing. The other was the club chairman's assertion that the staff's failure to compromise on wages contributed to the crisis. Manager Mike Smith posed with his team, pointing out that the club had never had so much publicity. He was disappointed about the decision to sell the players who were felt were the club's main asset. Captain Mick Horswell agreed. It could work two ways, with the better lads in the team, the more experienced players or the younger lads who are just coming aside. It could work better for them because they could get a, a move that's a lot better for them financially because they, they'll be going for cheaper than what they normally would. You know. On the other hand, uh, there's so many players on the transfer list at the moment. At the end of the season, the number's going to be unbelievable. So. Um, for the lads who are going to be struggling, it's going to be a long, hard haul for them. You know? What about Mr Needler's um, suggestion that part of the problems here were that the wages were just too high and you and some of the lads wouldn't compromise on yeah, them? Yeah, well, if he said, I haven't heard that statement from Mr Needler, but if he has said that, at the beginning of the season we came in and he, we, when you discussed contracts and what have you, and um, I think about six of us, yes, maybe half a dozen of us, took, actually took cuts for him at the beginning of the season to help the club to keep uh, the wager bill down. We actually took cuts, which is very rare in a footballer's life. The Tigers Supporters Club launched an appeal for money today to save the club and for supporters to fill the usually empty terraces tomorrow. So what kind of crowd can be expected? Well, realistically, I should say, I hope there'll be about five, maybe 6,000 people here. Um, the number that the club appealed for yesterday. With the gates dwindling at the moment, and the, also the fact that they've, um, unfortunately there's the local rugby on the telly tomorrow afternoon, um, and of course this weather won't help. Uh, won't help at all. Everything's against you this week. Well, this is it. Yes, it's uh, it's usually when you're down, you know, you get kicked all from all sides. After the war, one man dominated Hull City. Rach Carter, seen here playing for England in 1943. Gates of 40,000 at Boothbury Park were then not unusual. Matthews, Carter, Lawton, Hagen, Compton. That's England's forward line on this October day 14 years ago. No wonder the goals just roll along. Coming up is number three, Carter the scorer. Carter was player manager, so what's the difference between his playing days and the 1980s? Well, to put it in a nutshell, I think it's personality. Uh, I was lucky that I could play, and I, had, I signed Eddie Burbanks, he could play, Vigo Jensen and uh, we had quite a good side and of course if you put it on the field the supporters will come they'll still do it the club may be dead but the fans are not they say that the rugby has taken over here but i think football would come back with a real zip if they could only put on the field something that's worthwhile watching but how do today's generation of players see their future england in itself depressing all industries are the same but uh, this is my industry and it's, I'm very sad that it's going the way it is. From being at Sunderland in Manchester City when we were going through the glory days and now you're going to have to go through all of this, it's, um, it's not very nice. Paul Barry, what options are open to the receiver at Hull City? Well, the receiver has the uh, power to keep on running the business, but ultimately he really has to sell it, either as a going concern or by breaking up the assets, because He's been put in by the finance company and his job is to get the finance company's money back for them. And the only way he's going to be able to do that is by selling something. Now obviously he'd prefer to, to sell the business as a going concern because then Hull City would still continue to be a football club. But if he can't do that, if he can't find a buyer, then he's going to have to sell off the assets piecemeal. And that would mean selling off the ground, selling off the players, selling whatever other assets they do have. So in short then, the receiver's duty, first duty and... Uh really only duty is to the people who call him in, no matter what that means for the club, really? Well, um, yes, in strict terms, that's his duty, but I think receivers are uh, generally reasonable people. They don't, um, especially in this case, Mr Spencer, I think he's a director of Chelsea, so I'm sure the last thing he wants to do is to close Hull City down. I'm sure he'll be making every effort to keep it open, 
But his problem is that um, Hull City has been losing £9,000 a week, and it's a moot point whether there's anyone around who would be prepared to buy a club that is losing money. So we, um, we basically can't do anything about it. We've been told yesterday by Gordon Taylor, our PFA representative, that we're all being put up for sale, and if there's any offers come in, that they've got to be told about it. And um, we just can't do anything about it. I mean, it's up to the directors what happens from that. With so many players in the Doe queue and heading foreign, what do you think the chances are of most of you getting a move? It's going to be very, very difficult for players out of our team at the moment. I would imagine possibly four have got a really good chance of getting a club. And the rest of us are going to be struggling because there's basically that so many players on the transfer list and getting frees and what have you from different clubs that are all struggling. It's going to be very difficult to get a club. How difficult is it going to be to lift your game tomorrow and in the next few weeks? Yeah, well, we came in yesterday and we talked to the news and we were a little bit down, obviously. We didn't know where we were going to stand with our careers and our jobs and what have you. But we've come in again today and we've we realised we've got to work for a living now. We've got to go tomorrow and play to our full potential and give 110% because we're playing for keeping a job with ourselves. Manager Mike Smith was in disconsolate mood. Well, I mean, I understand the reasons behind it, but I think that uh, they are, in fact, the, the major assets of the club. And I think it was disappointing that they have made this decision that uh, any of them can go at any price. What about your own future? That, hasn't, uh, that isn't clear at the moment either. Everything's confused here. We've 42 people on the staff. That includes development people, includes management, secretarial side administration. Uh, everybody is suffering in the same dilemma. No one knows. We're not sure what's on, what's going to happen, who's going to do what. Hull's two high-flying rugby clubs say they will help in any way they can. Ironically, it was City who saved Hull Kingston Rovers from extinction 30 years ago when they allowed Boothry Park to be used for a series of benefit matches. And Hull City Supporters Club have launched a survival fund. Colin, last night the club agreed to start with a £500 donation, but can you hope to raise the kind of money that's needed? Well, hopefully we can. Um, but for the short-term policy, um, but we don't know how much we have to raise until we have a word with the receiver next week. How are you setting about raising the money? Well, as I said, we, we supporters club donated £500 to the fund last night. Um, and tomorrow we'll be collecting at the ground and hopefully again on Tuesday when we play Halifax. Um, and in the, short, in the coming weeks we've organised a dance already and all proceeds of that will go to the fund.